Welcome brothers and sisters to our Lenten series entitled Junk in the Yard. We're speaking about the sin of greed and one of the manifestations of this vice is our desire and pursuit of expensive items. This is the sin of materialism. Purchasing expensive clothes, shoes, items like cars. But what is at the foundation, grassroot of this pursuit is to show off, to fill up a void in one's own heart. Basically, an identity that will be given to me by an object. Let me give you a story. There was a young man who desired to have a brand new or fairly decent BMW to show off. He worked hard. He got his car and after a few months it got stolen. This man couldn't pick himself up from a depression and the emptiness of his life to the point that he needed to go to a therapy. But this is just an explanation and an example showing how the material goods can completely uh, cloud and overshadow the meaning of life. So the items that I have, I purchase, will constitute who I am, will give me value. But this is a lie because you may have a watch that costs $20 or a watch for $20,000 and you're still the same person. Nothing changes. Maybe you're even more arrogant, having more expensive things. So it is a way of trying to purchase people's attention, admiration, being someone in their eyes, raising their amazement at seeing that you have, let's say, a golden chain or you're dressed so beautifully and so extravagantly and you have the clothes from the best brands uh, in the industry. And yet, what is the identity that we have? Maybe the void, the non-acceptance of our lives, we would like to fill up with the items, with material goods, trying to show ourselves to be different than we are in reality and we are poor, we are imperfect, only trying to cover up the emptiness of our lives. Remedies that we can practice in our life for this sin of grief to wanting these flashy things, always wanting the best clothes, you know, sometimes it's to remind us that it's it's something related to vanity. So something that we lack a love in our life, wanting attention to understand that the simple life is better to truly put this into practice because sometimes we want to have the best clothes. We want to have the best jewelry. We want the world to like us. I can say I remember when I was in my teenage years, um, I would love to have all these brand new things for the people to like me, to make comp compliments or to comment on these beautiful things that I have. But I see that now that the Holy Spirit has truly taught me that um, the true way of loving myself is through the Holy Spirit and to be able to learn that the simple life is better. That, um, you know, sometimes we want to fill this void in in our hearts that we have with all these things. But at the end of the day, we know that all these materialistic things don't fill that void. Concluding our reflection, we find out that there is a lack of love at the root of the greedy person pursuit of expensive items. It's a way of drawing attention, of asking people's love. Does our life consist of receiving all the compliments and attention for the good, expensive things that we own? Is our value determined by the expensive clothes we wear? Have we ever asked ourselves what value do we have in God's eyes? 
How does he look at us? By how we are dressed up, what sort of cars we drive, what houses we live in. That really shows that we are very concerned to receive human applause and admiration instead of gaining the admiration in God's eyes. When Jesus was transfigured in front of his disciples on Mount Tabor, he heard from the Father who spoke from heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. God the Father didn't say, You are my beloved Son, because you decided to come to the earth to save the people. Or, you are my beloved son because you have to put up with a lot of rejection and accusations from the people and ultimately you will end up on the cross. You are so charitable and therefore you will be loved by me. Nothing of that. God's love is unconditional and this admiration that Jesus has in his Father's eyes is meant to be transferred over to us. He came to reveal God's love for us. We heard that many times, but do we believe it? That the Lord looks at us and says, you are my beloved son, you are my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased by the mere fact that you were created and then all the sacraments you have received and the graces that were given to you and to a greater or lesser degree working your way through this life and struggling and battling and falling down and standing up you are my beloved son this phrase changed the life of many people especially when they were at their lowest when they hit the rock bottom, when they were going through a time of being completely pushed down, discouraged and knocked down by the devil. You are my beloved son, Jesus tells us. We have infinite value in his eyes. He sent his son Jesus Christ to die for us, to tell us, you are my beloved son and daughter. And consequently, we are called to a simple life, simplicity of life. Simple is better and easier. We remember St. Paul said that if we have shelter and food, we should be content with that. Are we? When we pray, are we truly grateful to God from the bottom of our hearts saying, Lord, I'm so thankful that you granted me roof over my head and food. God is so good with us. That's an invitation to the simplicity of life, knowing that our value comes from God's infinite, unconditional and free love for us. God bless you, brothers and sisters, as we continue our Lenten series. Jesus, sold for 30 pieces of silver, guard me from greed and destructive craving for possessions. Help me believe that there is more happiness in giving than in receiving. Grant me a sensitive heart to poverty and generous in sharing. Amen.